so the front six allen key screws removed with a 4.5 mil allen key next is the six screws on the back of the steering wheel around the paddles very small phillips head screwdriver to remove those and you should be able to do it from the top of the wheelbase by rotating the steering wheel so upon removing those six tiny screws lifting the wheel from the base and it's the only thing left attached is that one pin connector which I was able to remove and that frees up the wheel all together so it looks like there's just a small amount of screws to undo after this to be able to access the PCB so unfortunately to wire into the uh, circle square X triangle would have been far too risky on the PCB so the easiest thing to do is to actually just solder into one of the R buttons in this case this is the R2 button so direct across closes the circuit um, into whatever switch you've made up for your handbrake so just a simple on off switch obviously it would be ideal to have analog but not if we're gonna actually run it through the Logitech wheelbase for the PlayStation 4 so uh, direct across here or either of these we tested them you could type you could tap into R2's or uh, R3's so solder point and then solder point two wires you could do it to any of those four buttons without any difficulty and it's really difficult to uh, to mess that up so I hope that's helpful to some people and I'll test it after I put it back together So this is my completed e-brake modification for a G29. Finally, it's just an on-off switch. And you can see it comes out the front there as per the previous videos and pictures. Uh, that's a connector I've decided to go with because it was easy. <laughs> I tried using a 2.5mm plug and failed. 
So I wasn't able to get it to function properly. I'm going to snip that off, actually. It looks ugly. So this is it. It wires down to my monetary switch, which I've mounted with a simple bracket onto this complete handbrake, which was basically the cheapest handbrake, e-brake, I could get off eBay. It cost me about $45. So basically, it's incredibly simple to do. Anybody could use a handbrake just like this one because... You don't have to change anything. Keep it completely intact. I've even left this on the end, even without the fluid. It still offers a certain amount of resistance and it's got heft and it returns it back to its original position. So you don't need to add a spring or anything. So this actually works really well. It's got a bit of weight to it, but it's a solid frame I've got. So that wasn't a problem. And all I've done is mounted it to the opposite opposite side. So basically I'm in Australia here, so we drive on the right hand side. So my shifters over here so this has got mounting brackets for both sides so the ones that i didn't use i've just drilled a hole in the side of uh, my e-brake here and mounted two bolts directly in because the threads were already there and despite its weight it takes it quite well so there's no issues so there it is you pull down hits the button and I've mounted it well. This is quite a flimsy piece of metal. You know, in a way, it's actually good because it does have a slight bit of movement to it, which helps. So I don't believe the button's going to get broken. So anyway, it's just an on-off button. It would be beautiful to have an analog, but not if you're going to put it through the G29 base if you ever want to use it for a PS4 game. So anyway, uh, that's it. Basically, <laughs> a lot of pain and suffering. <laughs> getting through this because I have no experience at all with any of this kind of stuff but I'm pleased with the result it's turned out very well so I hope this has been useful to some others because well there wasn't exactly any kind of guides out there I know it's a little bit rough but I think there's enough there to at least provide some assistance to some people so uh peace cheers